thanks. But learning augmented frequency estimation algorithms. So you have to. I don't know, but it looks same, but I should. All right, so uh, uh, hello uh, everyone. Thanks for uh, making it uh, in the morning. And uh, hello to people uh, on the web. Hi Ludwig. Uh, uh, so, uh, so this talk is about uh, augmenting uh, streaming uh, algorithms using uh, machine learning oracles to uh, improve their performance. Uh, this is joint work with uh, Chen Yu, uh, Dina, and Ali. Ali is here uh, in the audience. Uh, so I guess uh, the first thing is I should explain the title. I mean, the streaming algorithm for frequency estimation is something that you know uh, most of you probably know. So let me start from explaining uh, what uh, learning augmented uh, means. All right. So the starting point of this talk are the standard classical algorithms, right? So these are the the algorithms that uh, we all uh, work on, uh, know, and love, right? These are the algorithms that we teach in the algorithm courses. And uh, uh, from the perspective of this talk, the uh, distinguishing feature is that uh, they have worst case guarantees. Right? So we have the worst case guarantees you know, on correctness. I mean, the algorithms are supposed to be correct. Uh, they, if the algorithms are approximate, you have uh, guarantees on the accuracy, right? you know, potentially running time, and so on. So uh, they have uh, lots and lots of uh, benefits. But uh, they tend to have uh, one uh, drawback, right? which is uh, because they are designed for the worst case, they uh, typically don't adapt well to particular uh, classes of inputs, right? Uh, now, th there has been a fair amount of work on uh, fixing it, right? But, uh, you know, uh, typically, you know, you can improve the algorithm if you know, uh, if you can model the input distribution as well, right? Uh, so, but, you know, the, the generally speaking, uh, they don't adapt very well to just arbitrary distributions which are uh, given to you. All right, so uh, there have been uh, various attempts to, uh, uh, to fix it. Uh, and uh, in this uh, talk, I will focus on one of them, which is uh, machine learning-based uh, approaches. Okay? So what's the machine learning-based approach? Well, you know, the algorithm, the classical algorithm, you know, solve, compute some function. Right? It's a well-defined input. There's a well-defined output. Right? So now you can take uh, those inputs and outputs right, and uh, train a machine learning classifier on it. And uh, it simulates, uh, you know, the solution to the problem, right? Uh, so these approaches have been uh, very popular, especially over the last few uh, years. And uh, uh, generally speaking, you get a better performance, right? So you know, you, you can get a much stronger performance by doing it because you know that's what machine learning does, right? Machine learning adapts very well to the particular inputs. But uh, unfortunately, uh, typically, you don't have a very good control over what this algorithm does, right? So you know, you don't, you often uh, don't get a worst case guarantees, right? The algorithm, you know, can just uh, output some, you know, very strange things, right? So you know, you get a very nice algorithm, but uh, you don't quite get in control over uh, what this algorithm does. Okay, so you know, this is something, uh, uh, you know, potentially to, to worry about. So uh, uh, the learning uh, augmented uh, uh, algorithm approach, you know, tries to get the best of uh, both worlds, uh, which is, you know, to retain the adaptivity uh, of the uh, learning uh, algorithms, right? But at the same time, getting some control over, you know, what this thing does, right? So, so if uh, if uh, if it learns well, right? If uh, it behaves, you know, if it does what it's supposed to do, right? Then it's great. You adapt to the input. But uh, uh, you know, if it starts getting crazy, you have some worst-case guarantees to fall back on. Okay, so this is uh, basically what I mean by learning augmented algorithms for the uh, perspective of this talk. All right, now we're uh, by far not the first people uh, to to work on this uh, topic. Uh, so here is uh, you know some of the related work that I'm uh, aware of. Uh, I try to be thorough, but I probably miss some things. Right, so, so definitely after the talk, please now let me know. Uh, uh, now this is a uh, land release, so just to understand it a little bit better, I uh, try to put it, try to classify it into uh, three classes. Okay, uh, the first classes uh, uses the approach that uh, you know one can call uh, magic oracles. Right, so uh, in this approach, you use machine learning, right, to uh, train certain uh, oracles, which are uh, whenever you want, gives you some useful hints about the input. Right? So this is uh, particularly useful for uh, uh, online algorithms, right? Because in online algorithms, you, you don't know the future, 
right? But, uh, but you might be able to predict it, right? And uh, uh, in a recent work uh, by Nikolas Vasilitsky and, uh, and a few other people, you know, there are various approaches of uh, how to uh, use those uh, trained uh, magic oracles, right, to, to improve the performance of online algorithms while still retaining uh, some uh, performance uh, guarantees, right? And a similar approach has been also used in a recent paper by uh, Tim Kraska uh, et al., where they use uh, machine learning to implement data structures Right, but uh, then they fall back on standard data structures to fix the problem of false negatives. Right, so this is uh, one type of uh, one approach to use machine learning to improve uh, classic uh, algorithms. Another approach is uh, something that uh, I called learn gadget. By the way, uh, these are not very good names. If you guys have any better names, I would very much appreciate it. Okay. You know, it's not great, you know, but that's the best thing that I could come up with. All right. So what's a uh, learn gadget approach? So here the idea is uh, uh, that the algorithm, uh, by definition, uses certain structure, like a matrix or, or, or something like that. And uh, the structure is learned based on the input distribution. Right? So one example of this form is a uh, you know, line of research called uh, learning to hash, where the idea is that you take the data set and then you uh, sketch it to preserve distances. Right now, of course, we know that uh, this can be done using, uh, you know, various uh, randomized techniques, right? But uh, these uh, papers, you know, starting from the work of uh, Sarah Kudnikov and Hinton, essentially take the whole data set and uh, sketch it uh, as a whole, right? And they typically get a somewhat better performance because they tailor to the given input. And uh, more recently, a similar approach has been applied in compressive sensing, right? So I'm not getting to what compressive sensing is, but, uh, you know, there is a matrix. Right, that you uh, perform the measurements, and then from the measurements you recover your uh, vector. Right, so uh, uh, you know these works uh, uh, train uh, either the matrix, the measurement matrix, or the recovery algorithm uh, in order to uh, basically adapt better to the to the input. Right, if you want to know more about it, uh, ask uh, Eric. Uh, Eric. Ask Eric. That's Eric. Uh, so he uh, he's uh, one of the authors of uh, that paper. The last class is a something that I call the neural uh, algorithms, and these are basically you know neural networks all the way. Okay, so just take your algorithm, you implement it like almost physically, right, in, in a neural network as a hardware, and then you train the hell out of it, right? So uh, uh, so this is an end-to-end -end approach, right? So typically you don't have any guarantees whatsoever, right? Uh, but uh, often you get a pretty interesting results. And uh, there has been uh, recent papers by uh, Dai et al, who used it for uh, uh, TSP algorithm heuristics and also vertex cover, and uh, also uh, Mao Alizadeh and all, who used it for scheduling algorithms. Right. So generally speaking, uh, you know, like these uh, approaches uh, provide the spectrum in the sense that, uh, uh, you know, this class of algorithms give you some handle on the worst case uh, performance. Right, because uh, these algorithms, you know, you know, make some decisions, but in the worst case, they fall back on standard data structures, right? which means that uh, things cannot get too crazy. Right? On the other hand, uh, these approaches, to the best of my knowledge, uh, you know, there's no guarantees. Right? So, uh, buyers beware. Right? You know, algorithms typically work well, but you know, they can get arbitrary crazy. Right? So our work uh, falls into this class. Right? Well, we are also using a form of a magic oracles. Uh, for a streaming algorithms, and uh, you know, since we uh, fall into this class, you know, we still retain certain worst case uh, performance, and also we are able to analyze uh, these algorithms. All right. Uh, so, any questions so far? By the way, feel free to ask me any questions. Yes. The learning gadgets is kind of learning hyperparameters. That's. Uh, I mean. I guess you could call them hyperparameters, but uh, uh, yeah, I mean it's it's a semantic uh, issue. Like my understanding is, hyperparameters are just like some some knobs that you can tune, right? Picking your opposite class. Uh, your correct. Right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, I mean he, here the gadgets. Uh, I mean you know like the it's a fuzzy boundary, right? But here by gadgets I mean something which is uh, more inherent to the algorithm, right? For example, for compressive sensing. Uh, sensing matrix is the inherent part of the algorithm, right? So it's not like a knob, right? But uh, that is actually, you know, uh, one of two main components of the algorithm. 
right? But yeah, I mean, this, this, uh, this classification, you know, is, is fuzzy, right? You know, it's, it's not like an exact science. But that said, you know, at least from my perspective, I find this classification helpful, right? Because, you know, like when, when we teach algorithms, right? You know, we say, okay, this is divine and conquer, this is derived programming, right? I mean, the line between the two is, is often fuzzy, right? But it helps to, to, to have this mental classification, right? Because it helps, you know, thinking about various forms uh, of design. Good. Yes? Do you think about the machine learning as a tool to improve uh, say running time and space, or, right. maybe, or, or, or to improve the accuracy? Uh, well, in a, in a way, uh, both, right? Because it's, uh, our focus on streaming algorithms, and then there's a trade off in space and accuracy, right? Yeah. So, so depending on the situation, uh, you try to improve one or the other. Uh, so, for example, here you improve accuracy, accuracy. Uh, I guess here there's really a space, uh, sorry, the trade-off between accuracy and uh, measurements, uh, the same here. Uh, yeah, here it's the, it's time. Or actually accuracy, yeah. Yeah, often there's a trade-off, right? Yes? Um, in the last category, do you use the, uh, is there like a training step before where they get to see solutions to other TSP problems? Or yes. Is optimization part of the neural uh, Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, so uh, let's see. So I think that, uh, 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 actually, these algorithms here, right? So this is the last class. I uh, use uh, reinforcement learning, uh, which means it's like an ongoing process, right? You, you, uh, uh, you know, compute certain solutions, you get a reward or, or not, right? And, and based on that, you, you adjust your policies, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, this algorithm, I mean, there are very interesting constructions, but, uh, uh, you know, there is lots of black magic going on there, right? So, yeah. Good. Uh, any other questions? All right. So in this talk, I'll focus on uh, uh, one particular problem, which is frequency estimation. So I guess uh, most of you know what it is, but I'm just going to recap it uh, for completeness. Uh, so this is a streaming problem, right? So we are, we are given a data stream, a stream of uh, uh, entries, right? For example, this one. And uh, 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 essentially, we'll view the stream as a frequency vector, right? So for each item, right, the frequency vector has a count, right? You know, four uh, appears. If I go to the right, five times, right? So, so we have five. So, uh, so if we had enough space, we would just store the uh, the whole count, the whole vector. But uh, you know, we don't. This is a streaming algorithm, right? So what we want is I want to compress it. Uh, but still, uh, we should be able to simulate uh, access to this uh, uh, frequency vector uh, with some approximation, right? Approximation is due to uh, compression. All right, so the goal is to read the stream, and then you know whenever you are asked, okay, what's the frequency of i, you output some estimate, right, which uh, might or might not be the same as the true frequency of this uh, element uh, in the set. Uh, so this is a frequency estimation problem. Uh, it uh, has lots of applications. I'm not going to get into details, but uh, network measurements, right, is <coughs> one of them. Uh, it's using machine learning, NLP, security, uh, and so on, right. And uh, there are many algorithms, you know, both for this problem and the related problems like heavy heaters, right? When you just care about finding the elements which have high frequency, right? There are many variants. Uh, in this talk, I will focus on a hashing-based uh, algorithms that uh, I will refer to as count x, okay? Uh, where x stands for mean, sketch, median, and so on, right? So there are various, you know, count mean, count sketch, count median, right? So there are some of the classic uh, algorithms for, uh, for this problem, which are uh, vary. Uh, uh, mostly in how do you hash, and when, you know, once you hash, uh, what's your uh, estimate, right? But uh, on the high level, all of those algorithms uh, store a bunch of a uh, hash table, where each hash table in each bin has a count. Uh, when you have a new element, you hash it, and you increment the corresponding bin. And then if you want to estimate the frequency, you also uh, hash the element, and then uh, take all these uh, numbers and uh, perform some estimation. Right, so for count mean, you just take the minimum. Uh, for count median, you take the median. For count sketch, you do, uh, what do you do? You do a median of means, right? So, so the, you know, they differ, but uh, you know, they are uh, uh, roughly uh, the same on a high level. And uh, there are various advantages of uh, these algorithms. Uh, perhaps the chief ones are the handle deletions, right? Because uh, you, know, you can increment, but you can also decrement. 
right? And also some algorithms like uh, count mean, uh, they never underestimate. Right? They can overestimate, but they don't underestimate, which is uh, useful in some situations. So this is the class of uh, algorithms that uh, we'll focus on and uh, we'll try to improve their performance by using machine learning oracles. So before I describe the, uh, the algorithm, let's just do a, a thought experiment, which is uh, uh, essentially the following. So if we are to hope that machine learning is to improve the performance of those algorithms, then it means that typical data set uh, needs to have some structure that can be exploited. Right? I mean, if you just have a completely random data set without any structure, then you know, there's nothing to learn. Right? So you know, the question is, uh, you know, do typical data sets have some uh, structure that potentially can be exploited? And you know, at least in principle, it seems that the answer is yes. Right? So for example, for word data, right, if you have a word, it's known that uh, the length of the word is related to the frequency. Right? You know, typically, frequent words are short, and uh, long words are uh, not common. Right? Of course, it's not a, you know, it's a statistical uh, behavior. It's not uh, exact, right? But uh, you know, there's certain information uh, in the ID of the element, right? As long as you get the element as, as opposed to the hashed element, right? You can actually get some information from that. Uh, similarly, uh, for network data, you know, some IP addresses uh, are more popular than others, and you know, this is a pattern that uh, can. Uh, you know, hold for a longer amount of time. And if it's not individual IP addresses, then, you know, IP domains, right? You know, some IP domains might be very busy, right? Because, you know, they serve lots of traffic. So there is definitely some structure. And, uh, you know, if we could learn the structure, uh, then there is a hope that uh, we could uh, use it to uh, improve the algorithms, right? And in particular, okay. yes? I'm trying to understand, like, when you say, like, some, say, IP addresses are more popular, that's, like, right. uh, almost trivial. So right. you mean that, that uh, you're trying to learn the IP addresses that are typically heavy hitters or something? That's correct. And you Th encode them? Or you want to understand correct. the detail and therefore you're just like the structure of the entire picture? Well, you know, you learn what you can. If it's like decaying very fast, maybe it's easier to right. estimate than when it's like heavy tail. Right, right, right. Yeah, so I mean, you, you learn what you can, but uh, here, you know, I mean, this is, this is just a thought experiment, right? I, I do mean the, the heavy items, right? Uh, yeah, but if you like, the information about the specific IP addresses, that's yes. a lot of information, right? You can encode that after you learn it, but then it's going to be like a lot of... Uh, that's you move a lot of space into the design of the algorithm yeah. from this space, from oh, the yeah, RAM, yeah. you move it to, like, to the ROM of the algorithm. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, so you definitely have to do a proper accounting of all the space, right? Uh, yeah, so the, the, the question is whether you can learn some patterns here, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, again, it's a thought experiment, right? This is speculating what the machine learning algorithm could do, right? Uh, yes, but... Uh, you know, uh, the goal of, of this uh, uh, of these bullets here is just to demonstrate that, in principle, there is some information that I could be learned, right? Whether the algorithm is actually going to do it or not, that, that's a different story, right? Yes, and you know, if we know roughly what the headings are, then you know we can try to uh, use this information. In particular, uh, you know, one natural approach is to not uh, to avoid collisions of heavy hitters with other items, right? Or heavy hitters with each other, right? Because whenever heavy hitters collide you know, they create lots of error, right? So if you can somehow reduce it, you know, then, you know, in principle, we could improve the um, accuracy. All right. Uh, actually, what time do I have to stop? Uh, I think it was like 40 minutes from yeah. 10 past or 10, 10 past? All right, okay, so I have about 20. Yes, like, sure. Um, so uh, like for the IP addresses example, right. so this stuff is sort of labeled in some sense? So these, or these are just addresses that you know there, were there was trouble from there, maybe some? Uh, so, so here, <laughs> you just have the input uh, as described here. So there are no extra labels. Uh, if you have extra labels, sure, uh, you, you could uh, potentially use it, right? Uh, but as it is, uh, you know, you just get uh, this information, right, the stream, which actually carries information, right? Because, uh, you know, if you look at the traffic of the stream and you see one, 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 right, then, you know, chances are that one is a heavy hitter. Yeah. Now, that said, I think for IP addresses, uh, we, uh, I mean, for the network data that we look at, we also use the port ID, right? So we have more information than, uh, than just the ID itself. All right, so, uh, so you know, it, it works as a thought experiment, so let's see what exactly do we do. So uh, here is uh, our approach. So first of all, we have to 
define some sort of a overall a loss function, right? Some sort of overall error that uh, we aim to optimize, right? If you want to have a, a trade-off between the space and time, uh, sorry, space and error. Uh, so what we use is uh, uh, this uh, 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 a loss function, right? So this is uh, basically like a standard L1 uh, error, except that uh, the error is weighted by the frequency of the item. Right? So you want to make fewer errors on, the, uh, on heavy heaters. Okay? Uh, so this is an uh, 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 error function that uh, uh, often occurs in uh, practical papers. Uh, not much in theory, but uh, for example, this paper uses a uh, variant like this. Now, generally, uh, in practice, uh, people use all sorts of uh, loss functions, right? This is one of them. I believe that uh, uh, Vova, uh, in his papers, actually used the opposite, right? You took this and divided by Fi, right? So this is the average relative error, right? Yeah, so there are various, uh, various uh, types of uh, loss functions we can use. I will use this one. And, uh, uh, and what we do is uh, as follows, right? So we take a subset of the data to train the oracle. And the oracle uh, is uh, trained to detect heavy heaters. Okay. So basically, I want to have a magic oracle such that uh, when the stream element comes, it uh, uh, predicts whether the element is uh, heavy or not heavy. Okay. Of course, this oracle is going to make mistakes, uh, but, but that's all right, as long as it doesn't make too many uh, mistakes. And then once we have this oracle, uh, we basically build an algorithm around it. Uh, and essentially, depending on the outcome of the oracle, we have a different uh, uh, way of uh, storing this item. Right? So if the element is heavy, we just put it in a unique bucket. Right? So there's a heavy heater, you know, you just put on the side uh, so that it uh, doesn't collide with the rest. I mean, this costs us a little bit more because we have to store the count and the uh, ID or the hashed uh, version of ID, right? So the roughly co it's cost uh, twice as much as a regular bucket, but, but that's okay because uh, we, we gain on the uh, error, right? On the other hand, if the element is predicted as not heavy, we feed it to a standard sketching algorithm, right? And, and here, in the rest of the stock, unless it's of it, otherwise, the, the sketching algorithm is count mean. Okay. And, uh, and this is the whole algorithm. Right, so we, we train this oracle on the prefix of data, and then uh, for every element, you know, it either goes here or here, and, uh, and that's it. Right? The, the estimation is very natural. Right? You know, if element is here, we get the exact answer. If element is here, uh, we get uh, uh, some error. And you can see that uh, the error is controlled, right? because uh, uh, you know, the error is never greater than the error of this uh, uh, algorithm here. Right, so as long as we have at least some number of buckets here, you know, our total error is a control. All right, so, yes? I have a question about your definition of sure. heavy. Sure. You, you don't assume that there's some probability distribution that generates the stream, right? Uh, uh, well, for the theoretical aspects, uh, we do, uh, in a way. Uh, for, for the time being, I mean, th there is, yeah, there is, there, there is no assumption so far. So yeah. heavy means that the count from the beginning of history is, is high? Uh, well, count, uh, he heavy, uh, yes. Yeah, that, that, that's basically the meaning, yes. And the, 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 the oracle is uh, supposed to predict uh, whether, whether it will be heavy or not. Yes. So, so what does that mean when you say train an oracle as opposed to just run a heavy hitting algorithm? Uh, ah, OK. Can, can I uh, defer your question to uh, two slides from now? Okay. Actually, that's a, that's a very good question. Uh, uh, yeah, I, 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 will, I will get back to it. All right, so, so this is the algorithm. So we run it, uh, we, we tested it on a, a two data set. Uh, one of them is a network traffic from a Kaida. I mean, it's a standard uh, network traffic. A data set, it's a basically, a, a, you know, it stores the traffic of a link. Uh, it has many files. Each file has a one hour of traffic. And basically, we use that the first uh, few minutes to train, then a few more minutes to validate, and then we test it on the rest, in particular on, I think, minute number 20 and 50, uh, right, just to see how, how well uh, it behaves. Uh, this is the uh, histogram, right, in the log plot, the frequency. You can see that uh, it kind of, it's kind of Zipfian. I mean, not quite, right? It would be Zipfian. Uh, there would be a straight line. You know, this thing has a bulb, you know, like here. So it's, it's not Zipfian, but 
it's a zip, zip, zip uh, uh, I mean, this is relevant because later, uh, when I talk about theoretical results, we'll model uh, you know, the distribution as Zipfian, right? So <coughs> it's, not, it's not quite accurate, but it's not that far either. And the second data set we look at is the AOL uh, query log data set. I'm just curious, how many people have uh, played with it? Yeah, I know, because we got it from your paper, so. What do you mean? Uh, AOL? Uh, AOL query log data set. Yeah, if you, if you ever have, uh, I don't know, 20 minutes, uh, you know, I, I encourage you to look at it. It's a, basically these are uh, search queries collected by AOL like uh, 10 years ago and uh, uh, published, okay? And technically they were anonymized because the user IDs were removed, but uh, uh, if you look at the queries, you know, there's a, uh, it's actually, uh, you know, like some pretty crazy queries uh, out there. <laughs> and of course, people put the, also their names, right? So some of them are de-anonymized. I mean, some of the users are, I would say, certifiably psychotic, you know? <laughs> so it's, it's a very interesting read, right? Uh, but anyway, you know, we took this data set, it has 90 days, you know, we looked the first uh, few days for training, then a few days for validations, and then the rest for testing. Right? Uh, this one is more religiously following the, the zip uh, distribution, right? It's a, it's a, it's a line. So for the uh -huh. training, you assume that it's uh, also like in a streaming fashion, uh, like... Uh, ah, so training, uh, uh, training uh, takes... the first five days, it means that you can start using it like five days later, or you really have to store it and say make two passes, and that means that you have to store it? Uh, the, first, the first few days, uh, yeah, you have to store it and make a few passes, and it actually takes time, right? So basically the way uh, we envision using it is that, uh, you know, if you, uh, you know, if you want to monitor something for some number of time, right, you take a first few days, you train your oracle, right, which actually takes a while, right, and then you use this oracle, you know, for the, for the reminder. So the, if, you if it's in streaming, then you only have to wait for five days until yeah. your oracle is trained. But right. if it's like non-streaming, then you actually right. have to store this and then run it. Yeah, yeah, so, so, I mean, so it's something in between because uh, the way we train this, uh, uh, you know, the oracle, uh, I mean, it is a streaming, Algorithm, but uh, the way it's implemented right now, it makes a few passes, right? So, so it has to. Yeah, so we tried a bunch of ways of implementing the Oracle. The decision trees actually worked very well, uh, but uh, they weren't very compact, right? So they had a very good prediction, but uh, they also took lots of space, which, you know, given that we want to save space, uh, right, was an issue. So in the end, we, we use uh, uh, RNNs, and uh, I will not get into details of, uh, uh, <coughs> of the architecture, but uh, this data set was easier, so the neural network was smaller. Uh, this uh, was uh, 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 more difficult, so we used a more complex uh, structure. And this is the results uh, that we got. Right, so there are four graphs here, uh, so let's see uh, what is happening. These are graphs for the internet traffic data. These are graphs for the uh, AOL data. And uh, uh, for each of these uh, data sets, uh, we have one plot for count sketch uh, uh, and one plot for count mean, right? So count sketch, count mean. Now on each plot, uh, I'm showing the trade-off between the uh, error, right, as defined earlier, and space, right? So the lower, the better, I mean the lower error. And uh, uh, there are four plots, right? The blue, in all cases, is the classic algorithm, right? So here is the classic count sketch. Right, there's a trade-off between the average error and space. Uh, red, the solid red in all plots, uh, is a learned version of the count sketch, right? Which meaning that uh, uh, you train the oracle, right? And, and the space is uh, uh, also included in the uh, in the total amortized over all days, right? So uh, you know we include the space needed to store the recurrent neural network uh, in uh, this plot here. So, you know, you can see that uh, uh, the learned version uh, outperforms the uh, uh, classic version, right? It's not surprising because, you know, it has some extra information. Uh, the amount by which it uh, outperforms the classic algorithm varies, right? So, uh, you know, it's uh, uh, largest in count sketch. Uh, the gap is uh, smaller for count mean, uh, for internet traffic, and then, you know, for search query, uh, you know, for AOL data, you know, the gap is smaller. Right, but uh, you know, definitely uh, there, is a, there is a gap. Okay, now what are the other two curves? Uh, this curve here 
is uh, essentially augmented uh, count sketch or count mean, but that's augmented uh, with the original uh, training data set. Right, so if you look at the original training data set, right, you know, you can see in the training data sets what is a heavy heater, what is not, right? Just store the heavy heaters, and then it gives you some form of oracle, right? Later, when you see an element, you can just see, okay, was it heavy heater then or not? Uh, if it was a heavy heater then, then you classify as heavy heater, and otherwise uh, as not. Right? Of course, you have to store those heavy heaters, right? But uh, it's an oracle. And uh, uh, so this algorithm also improves uh, over. Uh, so this is essentially uh, augmented uh, algorithm, but not augmented with a learning oracle per se, right? Because I think it's like a statistical uh, oracle, right? Or just a storage, uh, storage oracle. So you can see that, that the, the, it does improve. It doesn't improve as much as the land version on the internet traffic uh, data. Uh, for uh, AOL data, actually both behave uh, very similar, right? And uh, well, except for the like very high space regime, right, where uh, you know the, the, the gaps are so grow, right. But uh, earlier they basically behave very uh, similarly. And uh, as far as uh, we can tell, this is because uh, uh, in internet traffic, you know, as you go from one minute to another, uh, the exact IDs change, right. But uh, overall patterns, you know, still remain constant, right. For example, the traffic can move from one IP to another IP address, but from the same domain, right? So this is something that uh, table lookup doesn't capture, right? Because the IP changes, but a learning algorithm can, can discover it, right? They should just forget about the uh, lowest different bits of the uh, IP address, right? Just focus on the domain itself, right? Uh, so we think that uh, this is why uh, you get uh, this gap here, but uh, the gap here is uh, much smaller, right? Uh, the last uh, curve here, uh, the green one, uh, this, is, uh, this is actually not an algorithm, but uh, this is like an ideal uh, algorithm, right? So uh, this shows what would happen if we had the perfect heavy heater oracle, right? So our heavy heater oracle is not perfect, right? But if we had a heavy, uh, perfect heavy heater oracle, then this is the trade-off that we'll get. And you, know, you can see that there's quite a lot of improvement. Uh, the potential that, right? Now, of course, one has to, it's a little bit tricky because it's almost like a chicken and egg, right? You know, uh, in order to know heavy heaters, we kind of have to know the frequencies, but this is something that we want to predict in the first place, right? But it's not quite uh, chicken and egg, because uh, in this case, egg is actually simpler, right, than the chicken, right? Because the, the egg, I mean, the, uh, you know, the oracle uh, just wants to, uh, you know, it suffices that it gives you a binary answer, right? It's something a heavy heater or not, right? It doesn't have to estimate the frequency. Right, so, you know, in principle, uh, you know, it might be possible that by using better learning algorithm, you can push things. Uh, yes? You count in the space also the algorithm used by the, the, the space used by the yes. learning? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's uh, amortized over uh, the whole testing period, right? Uh, amortized? Uh, uh, You're not using worst case memory. <laughs> uh, so basically what we do is, uh, you know, uh, we uh, take this uh, uh, neural network, uh, learn it once for all of the uh, minutes, right? And then use the same network for all of the minutes, right? So each time you run uh, something on a different minute, you have to use a different uh, count sketch and uh, other things, but the function itself remains the same. Yeah. Um, um, so do you try using just uh, uh, like a streaming algorithm like Michigrees, which is already data adaptive? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so uh, uh, we didn't compare it to Michigrees because uh, you know we wanted to compare apple to apple, right? So in particular, we focus on hashing because uh, it also supports deletions and uh, has some other nice properties, right? Uh, but yes, uh, Misha, Misha Gris, uh, uh, will, you know, I mean, it's not that uh, Misha Gris behaves better than CountMean. For example, right? If you just run it on, uh, right? Uh, but uh, you run it only on, you know, it works only on insertions, insertion on the stream, right? So, um, <coughs> these, these data sets only have insertions. Uh, that's correct, but uh, you know, we uh, want to compare apples to apples, right? So we don't tailor these data sets, you know, the algorithm to the data sets, right? Uh, it is just the data sets that we run it on. Yeah, yeah, but uh, so certainly, uh, you know, if you, uh, you know. If you don't use hashing algorithms, if you use Mr. Gris, you get a better performance. But that said, uh, you know, in principle, you could add, add, you can use the same approaches to Mr. Gris too, right? Now, I could uh, imagine various ways of augmenting that algorithm with uh, learning formation. Yeah. But uh, you know, uh, we want to be careful to compare uh, things in the same class, right? So that. 
All right, so I think that I have uh, about five minutes left, uh, right? So let me just uh, speed up. Uh, let me just uh, mention briefly our theoretical results. Uh, so basically, we try to make sense of uh, uh, this uh, plot. Uh, so we uh, 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 did some analysis. Uh, for the analysis, we focus just on the count mean uh, algorithm. And uh, uh, we assume uh, that the uh, distribution is Ziffian, right? Meaning that uh, the uh, uh, frequency is uh, proportional of the ith elements proportional to one over i. Okay. So uh, in this case, I mean this is like a fully described situation. So you know the algorithm is well defined, so we can compute the expected error. And uh, these are the results that uh, we got, right? So for the uh, count mean uh, uh, using a k uh, hash tables, uh, we did not manage to quite get exactly uh, what's the uh, asymptotic order of the uh, error, but uh, we got the upper and lower bounds, right? And they differ by this factor here, uh, which, you know, for k large enough, it's essentially log n, uh, log of uh, n over b. Actually, that's important, right? So here you have a log n, here you have log of n over b, uh, here you have also log n, right? So for this uh, original algorithm, uh, here you have log n. Now, uh, if you uh, use a learn count mean, I mean, you know, the quality depends on the uh, learning, right? So if you had a perfect oracle, uh, then you get this. I mean, this perfect oracle can be relaxed to have some small probability of error, right? And then there's a trade off. And the basic difference is that uh, between these two is that uh, here you have log n, while here you have uh, log n or log n square, right, uh, of n over b. So in the high, uh, accuracy regime where b is comparable to n, right, number of items, you know, this is a constant where this uh, log n sticks uh, around. Right, so basically, at least in this range of uh, uh, parameters, you, you actually get a, you know, improvement, right, uh, uh, at least for the uh, Ziffian distribution. Uh, furthermore, uh, uh, we proved that uh, this bound here is actually tight in the sense that uh, uh, even if you designed your hashing scheme uh, knowing the full uh, information about the input, right, even then you have to pay uh, this much, right? So, so this is uh, as long as I use a count mean estimator, right? So this goes way beyond uh, our uh, algorithm, right? It uh, just uh, allows the uh, you know, algorithm to <coughs> Uh, select the hash functions in arbitrary way, arbitrary way, uh, the, you know, tailored uh, to the stream, right? So it knows a priori what the heavy hitters are, you know, puts them separate buckets and, and whatnot, right? Uh, so even even then, uh, if you use a hashing based algorithm, which uses a count mean estimator, uh, even then the algorithm has to pay uh, this much, right? So at least in the asymptotic sense, our algorithm uh, is uh, optimal, right? And the way we prove it. <coughs> Uh, <coughs> let me actually skip this part. Now, the way we prove it is, uh, you know, we prove a structural lemma, which basically shows that, uh, uh, you know, without loss of generality, uh, any item which is uh, pretty heavy cannot collide with other items. Right? Which basically means that, uh, you know, essentially, uh, you know, what our algorithms attempt to do, which is put heavy heaters separately, you know, is uh, asymptotically optimal. Uh, Right, and and uh, based on that, you know, we're able to show that uh, uh, you know, if your input is uh, Ziffian, right, and if you follow this uh, hashing uh, approach, uh, then no matter how you assign uh, those uh, elements into the buckets, you, know, you have to pay at least this much. And for the sake of uh, time, I'm going to skip the intuition about the Analysis that there's a, the, the analysis of count mean uh, with uh, k hash functions is a little bit messy, but uh, for a simple hash functions there is a uh, you know like a rather clear intuition why in one case you get log n and in the other case you get log n over b. It just follows from the fact that uh, in the you know when you integrate everything uh, in the land version, in the, in the, there's a perfect oracle, you just ignore the heavy heaters, right? And then that means that you don't integrate over the whole range from 1 to n, but you integrate from b to n, right? And, and this basically creates uh, this feature. All right, so uh, to conclude, 
Uh, so uh, basically, this paper will show that our learning, machine learning, can help uh, performance of a uh, streaming algorithm, in particular the, the frequency estimation. Uh, there are certain drawbacks, right? You know, we have to train this thing, right? And uh, it takes a while, right? So, uh, but uh, once it's trained, you know, the, the, the uh, accuracy is better, at least in the space of a hashing algorithm. We have some theoretical understandings, but uh, certainly not full. Because we, so far, we couldn't analyze count sketch. Right? Count mean, uh, we can, but the count sketch is uh, uh, more complicated. <coughs> we have some ideas, right? but uh, you know, we don't have uh, comparable bounds. And uh, you know, last but not least, uh, this is a very general approach. Right? So I'm definitely very interested in uh, knowing if there is some way of to, to apply this uh, uh, machine learning oracles to other streaming uh, problems, right? you know, potentially. Uh, improve the performance, you know, while still hopefully retaining uh, some uh, guarantees, right? So that you know we don't use our, uh, our algorithms don't get you know wild uh, out of hand. All right, thank you. Yes. So, so essentially, what you're saying, it, it seems that the, for the machine learning algorithm to be meaningful, you have yes. to assume something about stationarity of the distribution. Right. And the, na the inherent nature of streaming algorithm is saying, I don't know what's coming. Right. It can change all the time. Right. So in order to get some guarantees, you have to somehow find a setup which sure. is in between these two. Right, that's right. So. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, so there are two answers to that. One is uh, theoretical, one is uh, empirical. Right. So uh, empirically, uh, for this algorithm to work, you, you, yes, you need to, essentially what you need to know is that the oracle that you learn, you know, has to make meaningful predictions in the future, right? I mean, if it doesn't, it's not too bad, right? You lose a little bit, uh, it's, but you know, you never lose too much, right? Because you always fall back to the worst case, right? But it doesn't help, right? So, so, so why would you train it and use it, right? But yes, I mean, uh, so that's something you can test empirically, right? You know, you can just run it and see what happens, right? In theory, yeah, that's, that's a more, uh, it's a deeper question, right? Because like, what is exactly the right framework that you need to assume in order to make meaningful conclusions, right? So in a way, in this work, we kind of like completely sidestepped the, you know, the generalization part. Uh, you know, we can notice that there's no generalization, right? You know, we only said, okay, if the oracle uh, has a small property of error, then good things happen, right? But, you know, of course, you know, is it going to have a small property of error, right, or not? I mean, that's, that's, uh, uh, you can test empirically, but, you know, in order to prove something about it, you have to have some framework, right? So that, that's actually very interesting. Yes? Going back a little bit to that, would it make sense then to run some kind of streaming testing or like change point detection algorithm at the same time to say like, oh, I detect that actually, right. diverging from what I've learned, let me, Learn again? Yes, actually, that's a that's a very that's a very good idea. Uh, we were uh, thinking uh, about it, but at the end of the day, we just uh, gave up, you know, because like already training all of this was. Uh, but that's actually a very very good point. I mean, you know, ideally, you would like to have uh, some sort of a warning, uh, right? Warning bell. Okay, you know, your oracle, you know, just doesn't make any sense, right? You have to do something different, right? Retrain. Uh, retrain, yeah. Or, or in the simplest case, just you know, forget about it. You know, just fall back to the worst case, right? Because, you know, we, uh, you know, th this algorithm, uh, you know, if the oracle uh, doesn't work, I mean, you still get some worst case behavior, but you know, it's constant factor less, right? And since, you know, at the end of the day, we care about the constant factors, it would be nice to 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 be able to say, okay, your oracle just doesn't make any sense. You know, just you know, fall back, right? Yeah, that's interesting. How robust is the analysis uh, with respect to the exponent of the hard law distribution? Ah, so r right now we have only the analysis for the uh, for the for this, right? For exponent of one. Uh, I mean, if it's a, a alpha which is different than one, you get some dependence on alpha, right? We actually didn't go carefully through that. Uh, the reason we focus on alpha equal to one is because, uh, uh, you know, this actually is uh, pretty close to one. Right? So if it's not if it's not quite one, you you don't get log n, but you get some dependence on alpha, right? And if alpha is one over log n, you know, you do get some interpolation. Yes. What happens if you just use a count mean sketch as as the oracle? 
so that's a, uh, that's a good uh, question. Uh, I guess, you know, we use the very uh, primitive version of, well, I guess we never actually quite, actually it's a good question, we, we never tried it. Uh, but but um, it would be worse than the dotted plot that you had, the hash table, because it already knows the... Uh, that's true, but uh, the full hash table also has to store all the heavy hitters, right? So count mean gives you something in between, because uh, it doesn't only store heavy hitters, it stores everything. But on the other hand, uh, it stores it in a compressed form, right? So, so actually, I have no idea what will happen. Actually, we can, we can try it. Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. Any other questions? Thanks again. Thanks.